Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Come walk with him. Come talk with him. Come feast with him. Come worship Jesus, our risen Lord. Well, good morning. I hope that you're all well and are staying safe in these strange situations that we still find ourselves. Today is the third Sunday of the Easter season. Welcome to this short act of prayer and a reflection on today's Gospel reading. Today's Gospel comes from Luke chapter 24, and we encounter two of Jesus' followers who are returning home on that first Easter day and they encounter Jesus and recognise him in the breaking of the bread. Our gathering prayer. God, we are your people. We walk a journey together. We talk and share along the way. We break bread together, and in doing so, we meet, recognise and know Jesus is present among us when we're in isolation, and when we're in company, today and always. Amen. Now on that same day, the day of the resurrection, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. One of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have taken place there in these days? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Weren't our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The breaking of the bread. It's a simple action and a familiar phrase. Its use in the New Testament is interesting. Over the last week, some of you have been taking part in our Easter course, Praying with Luke's Gospel. The links will remain up on the resource site this week, so if you haven't had a chance to, take a look when you can. Today's Gospel reading was also from Luke, and it's Luke alone who uses the phrase, the breaking of the bread. Somehow, Luke tells us, the risen Christ is recognised as being present in that simple action. In the Gospel reading today, we heard how two followers of Jesus encounter him after the resurrection as they walk home to Emmaus. But crucially, they don't recognise him at first. Who were this couple? Only one of them is named, and he's named as Cleopas. 
Now, he may be the same person as the Clopas, who's mentioned in John's Gospel, chapter 19, verse 25. Clopas is described as the husband of one of the women named Mary, who stand at the foot of the cross. Maybe, then, this is Cleopas and Mary returning home, puzzled, bemused and anxious about what has been going on. They encounter someone else on the road, who talks with them on the journey about scriptures, and as the night is falling, they invite him to stay with them. It's only then, at the meal table, that they recognise him as Jesus, and they recognise him in the breaking of the bread. Why did they recognise him, and how? Now, there's no suggestion that either of these two were present at the Passover meal, the Last Supper. So Jesus' action at their meal table, as he breaks bread, seems unrelated to his actions at the Passover. Maybe Jesus simply had a characteristic way of breaking or tearing a loaf apart. He would have shared many, many meals with the disciples in the course of his ministry. Whatever the reason, as he breaks bread, he is recognised. And the couple become the first people in Luke's Gospel to see the risen Christ. There's no appearance in Luke's Gospel of the risen Christ at the tomb. Although, when they get back to Jerusalem, it seems that somehow, at around the same time, Peter has also encountered him. Luke didn't only leave us his Gospel. He wrote a second book that we know as Acts of the Apostles. And in Acts of the Apostles, Luke refers to the breaking of the bread four times. It seems to be a central act of the early Christian community, an action carried out by people in their own homes. Is this breaking of the bread an early form of the Eucharist, our Holy Communion? Or is it something distinct? In Acts... It appears to be carried out in ordinary homes, but associated with prayers and fellowship. Luke wrote his Gospel and Acts of the Apostles sometime after Paul had written his first letter to the Corinthians. And it's Paul's letter to the Corinthians, which in chapter 11 gives us the first reference to the Eucharist. And by the time Paul is writing... The Eucharist has assumed a formal structure and is already bound up with rules as to who can or who can't receive. But although writing his Gospel and Acts of the Apostles later, Luke is referring back to the very earliest years of the Church, and the believers in Acts seem to be carrying out a much simpler action. There's no mention of wine. It's a simple breaking of the bread, with no fuss or ceremony, and in that they are encountering the risen Christ. There's been a lot of talk this Easter about whether congregations can share Holy Communion online, with participants having bread and wine in front of their computer screen. Our three denominations have a variety of opinions and practices on this. Maybe we have to leave sharing Holy Communion until we're able to gather together physically. But we can share in the breaking of the bread, in our own homes. A simple act, with no complex formula of words and no rules as to who can lead or participate. So why not incorporate breaking of the bread in your prayer time? With fellowship, maybe, online or by phone. For Christ is encountered whenever we break bread together. Let us pray. God, we thank you that in Christ you come out and meet us where we are. We thank you that you walk the road with us, that you treat us as companions even when we fail to recognise you. We thank you that you always love us, always care for us, always want to break bread with us, 
such is your love. Thank you, Lord, that you are not a stranger, but our friend. We worship and adore you. Amen. Thank you for praying and reflecting on scripture with me again this morning. Now, if you started watching this at 10am on Sunday, you'll just have time now to go and make a coffee and then join us with around 500 others for a live act of worship presented by Birmingham Methodist District. Now, that's on Facebook Live, but you don't need to be a Facebook user to participate. Simply go to my resource site, www mjclarridge.co.uk and the link is prominent on there. That will enable you to connect to Facebook and join in the act of worship. Take care, stay safe, best of all, God is with us. Lord Jesus, as you walked on the road to Emmaus, Walk with us as we travel on. Help us to know your presence abiding with us, and help us to be your presence to others. In the name of the risen Christ. Amen. <laughs>